Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be showing you and talking about my so far up-to-date Disney Funko Soda collection. So as you can see here, I have, try to do the math, two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight, nine. I think it's nine. I'm, I'm going to be so mad if it's not nine. Nine Funko Sodas, um, all of which are the Disney ones. And right from the get-go, I'm going to say it's an exclusion. I'm not collecting Star Wars or Marvel for Funko Soda just because I know they're going to do them. And I'd rather be like limiting what I can collect. So I'm not going to get every single release. Plus so far for the Marvel releases, I've just been a little like meh about. The Thanos is cool. I don't care for like the Luchadores too much. Um, I think they just previewed or and or released an Iron Man. And like, okay, it's like one has the helmet, one doesn't have the helmet. Like I'm just not too thrilled about it. So I'm going to stick primarily to like collecting Disney animated features slash films. I mean, maybe if there's some Marvel and Star Wars ones that are like here and there, I'll pick them up. But for the most part, I'm trying to stick and be really focused. Um, but yeah, this is the collection so far as of mid-February. I know the next one that's due to be released for Disney is the Vampire Jack, which I also think is a little lackluster since we already have a regular Jack Skellington. And for like chase-wise, it's practically the same in terms of being a glow chase, I think. So eh, a little boring, but I will be getting it. But I just wanted to show you guys my collection. I'll do some close-ups and, you know, all that. And just kind of talk about my opinions on Funko Soda, why I'm collecting them, and so kind of how they differ from Funko Pops. I know Funko Pops, I mean, we all know Funko Pops. They have become this just huge sensation globally to the point where, like, the pandemic has led me to even collect them. I had collected Funko Pops just kind of, like, very casually, like, very casually, not to the, this capacity that I have now gone into them. But during 2020 and the onset of the pandemic, something happened one way or another, and I started collecting them. And that eventually led into Funko Sodas. And these are relatively newer, and I would say a lot less well-known compared to Funko Pops. Um, obviously, I feel like Funko collectors themselves, people who are really into the Funko community, people who collect Funko themselves, probably know Funko Soda. But I would say like the average Funko Pop fan, you know, maybe someone who's, like I said, casual about it, they might not be as privy to like what Funko Sodas are. Um, so basically, Funko Sodas are a vinyl figure, just like Funko Pops, except there's a couple key differences. So I would say the first one of those key differences is, well, let's go with packaging. They come in these little cans, they're super cute. They all have this sim similar font with soda, and then there'll be a different picture of the character. I've noticed that no matter what, if it's a live action character or an animated character, the picture on the can is always a drawing slash like an animated version. It's not like a live action picture. So for example, the Iron Man one, it doesn't have like, I don't know, like a screenshot from Iron Man of the character. It's an animated drawing. Packaging is very different. It doesn't come in a box. They're a metal soda can. The top of the can comes off and the figure will be inside the can. Um, so part of, and then they come actually in a black bag. I don't have one unopened, but it's just like a black bag to keep the figure hidden um, up until you open it. So the packaging right off the bat is very different. Can versus box. Um, and then I think like the vibes are going for right off the bat is a very much like this retro vibe. I love it. It's kind of like a, you know, an old style soda shop. Um, so the packaging's different. Number two is these all have a limited edition size, a limited edition run. So for example, Jack Skellington, there's 20,000 of them made. This includes both the common version, which typically is five out of six, and then the chase version, which is usually one out of six. So for example, Jack's 20,000, I think Roger Rabbit's 10,000, Clarabelle, am I right on that? What is Roger? Roger's 10,000, I think Oogie's also 20,000, Clarabelle, I want to say, is 8,000. I can't even see her can. Like, what is she? 8,000, yes. And then the clown, the tearaway face clown is 3,000. He's a little bit more of an exception to a lot of what I'm going to be talking about, but I will talk about him eventually. Um, so that's different. Not all Funko Pops are like this. Actually, very few are. Mostly con releases. So, you know, 
every con you might get like one to three limited run pops and that could be anywhere from like 500 a thousand two thousand you know the numbers vary but like funko does that very sparingly and when they do those pops tend to be very very sought after and very very like the value just skyrockets and it also is dependent on the popular character there's a lot of factors but for funko sodas that's something that is just like built into the framework of the product the fact that once retail these are all sold out you either have to buy second hand or figure it out essentially and i just think that is very different and very alluring because now you're no matter what you're buying a limited product and say two three four five years down the line and funko sodas are a thing a product line that still exists now these figures you're going to have to buy them second hand especially those chase figures that are one in six i think the value of them will just become a little bit more um i don't know valuable i guess is what i'm trying to say <laughs> um but yeah it's, it's just a unique thing that is unique to funko sodas um for example we'll go into the tearaway face clown he's limited edition of 3000 because he's from i want to say WonderCon, but i could be incorrect but he's from a convention um and sometimes early on for Funko Sodas, when they did co convention releases, they didn't also release them with variants. So he's limited edition of 3000. That's it. Just, just this one design. No variant, just him. There's a couple other ones like that. And then I think they eventually caught on that like that chase aspect is something that they like about this product. So they've started, I think, doing con releases that do have variants. I think, for example, the She-Ra from the last um, New York Comic Con and then the Freddy Funko both had it. Uh, variants slash chases and they were con releases so i think moving forward it'll keep that format i think this will be something that was like uh something that they learned and adapted and then i mean i kind of already talked about it you can kind of already tell there's two versions of a lot of these figures the second thing that makes them very unique compared to funko pops is that there's always almost always a chase variant um i think this is my favorite aspect of Funko sodas. What I really like about them having variants, it might not be something that like the average, it's very different than what I think makes chases slash variants alluring in Funko Pops. I think in Funko Pops, what's very alluring is like a chase figure is like you're like, it's that sticker, it's the thrill. There's a lot of uh, factors that go into it, but sometimes, you know, you are like thrilled for a chase figure and then you get that figure and you're like, oh, this, this is whatever. Like, you know, there's a lot of conversation amongst Funko Pop communities of bad chase figures like there's just a lot of conversation about that because you know it's kind of become a gimmick where it's like ah just make it a chase change a color here add a glow element do this and make it a chase and don't get me wrong a lot of that unfortunately has carried into funko sodas but i do think from what i've seen so far funko has been very innovative with like pushing their design boundaries with the chase variants for funko soda and that's why I really like that chase slash like variant design being built into the framework of the product. Because from what I've seen, I really have liked what Funko's done. And the examples I have off the top of my head right in front of me, I would say um, the Roger Rabbit is really cool. I don't think had, I mean, not I don't think, I mean, Funko has released the Roger Rabbit pop and it doesn't have a variant, but I think like variant chase you know what i mean but it doesn't have a chase figure but i think like this chase figure is super cool very simple very um what's the right word like very nonchalant but like very effective and a lot of collectors have been receptive to this because it's creative it's like roger rabbit it's his character he's smitten by jessica rabbit and like he's all just got smooches all over him and it fits for the framework of the film it fits for people who love the character and it's it's very what's the word clever and I would, I, could, I would use that word clever for a lot of my favorite chases for Funko Soda. Um, another example, going beyond what I have right in front of me, I know the Secret Squirrel Funko Soda chase is both flocked and glow. I thought that was pretty cool. Granted, the glow is just on like his little coat, but like just pushing the boundaries of what they've done in the past. I don't, from my knowledge, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think we've had a glow and chase released by Funko in both Funko Pop lines and Funko Soda line up until that figure. And then the last group of examples I want to use is the serial ad icons. I don't collect ad icons, it's not my thing, but I thought those chase variants were amazing. They were basically, for example, um, you had the Fruit Brute figure, which is the common, 
and then the chase figure was um, I think it was a blueberry colored fruit brute. So it was the same figure, but with the color scheme of uh, blueberry. And then they did that for all of them. It was like yummy mummy colored blueberry and then Count Chocula covered this. And it was just really cool because you have this iconic group of characters and you're pushing the boundaries of like how to give them alternatives alternative figures that are still very cool that still fit in and make sense and that are just like things that we haven't seen before and i really like that because that to me is clever it's being creative and that's what i love most about collecting these is seeing what funko is going to do next sometimes it's a flop but sometimes it surprises me and catches me off guard and that's what i've liked thus far oh my god do i even dare go into my thoughts and feelings about little old oogie boogie because i have a lot yeah, we're gonna do it. You know what? It's yeah, we're getting into it. Okay. I have a lot to say because when they originally released Oogies, this is so off topic. Y'all like, dude, what are you talking about? But okay. When they released Oogie Boogie and they showed the little picture, you know, talking about like his release or whatever, the common figure was supposed to be the brown burlap burlap one, and then the chase figure was supposed to be the glow. The glow one. And then when they actually came out, that was not true, that was the opposite. The chase figure ended up being the normal brown burlap and the common figure ended up being the glow version. And I think a lot of people were, one, caught off guard because that's not what they were initially sold on. You know, what we were previewed slash like the expectations that were built and that were set, you know, were gonna be uh, common and chase. And I think like, oh my God, I totally did that backwards. I think we're so used to that type of framework in Funko Pops, like we've kind of been conditioned, like whatever we consider special, we always find in the chase. So if it's gonna be glow, if it's gonna be flocked, if it's gonna be metallic, if it's gonna be, I don't know, do they do glitter chases? If it's gonna be something like a chase, it's usually gonna have that extra va va boom. You know what I mean? I mean, we've been conditioned as fans, as people who collect these products, we've seen their releases, we kind of know what to expect. And for that, I kind of like that they switched it up. And here's why. Typically what makes the chase alluring is is limited availability. And ex a great example is for Funko Sodas, you know, you have a clear framework of like one and six and five and six, and then you have a limited count. You know, if it's LE of, I, mean, I don't even know the math. <laughs> What's Roger's chase number? Roger's chase is uh, 1600 for the chase. So I'm guessing, trying to do the math, 8,400 for the common. If you have a clear number of chases, that's obviously gonna add value to it. It's gonna add something that's gonna allure collectors to wanna get it. But what ends up happening there is that the chase figures, or the, I mean, not the chase figures, the common figures just kind of end up becoming like chump change. You know, I'm guilty of this where I'll buy three, four, you know, however many of a figure hoping to get a chase. And then I'm left with a plethora of commons just lying around like, okay, how can I get my money back? And you see that a lot on the secondhand market because people do just what I said, where you buy a whole lot go for that chase, you know, it's kind of fun, it's a thrill, and then you're left with these commons, like, ugh, nah, you know? But what I think Oogie Boogie scenario does is it creates a scenario where the common is just as exciting as a chase. And the reason I say that is because, I mean, personally, I mean, everyone would probably agree with me, it's just cooler. It's green, it's glow. I mean, even the vinyl is almost like a little translucent, a little opaque, like it just looks cool. It just looks cool. So now you have a scenario where the common figure, even though it is the common one, there's more of them, um, it's still desirable and there's still value, value, maybe not monetary value, but definitely like value to it. So it's not just gonna be something that people are like, ah, as long as I get the chase, I'm good. No, you're gonna want the chase because it's, it's, it's rare, but you're also gonna want the common because it's cool. And that's what I like. It's something that like, whether that was by intention or not, it's something that Funko did that flipped the script. And yeah, a lot of collectors don't like when the script gets flipped because I mean, come on, we kind of love to predict things. We love to like say, I think this is what they're gonna do. And when they do that, we feel affirmed. We're like, yes, they did it. Like, I'm so smart. But I mean, we're just following patterns of the past. And so I feel like thus far with the short time that Funko has had with sodas, they've kept me on my toes. They've kept me surprised. And that's why I love them. And um, I kind of talked about this and I didn't show it earlier, but they also come with these little very Pog-esque, very like thick cardstock chips almost. And 
they will tell you the limited edition size of the figure as well as if you got the chase. So for Roger, it says you found the chase and then it'll tell you the limited edition run. So for Roger, it's one out of 1600. And then it actually gives you a description of what the chase figure is supposed to look like. So it says kisses Roger Rabbit. And then for all of them, the common figures will just have a white background of the character's head. And then the chase uh, pog chips will have a colored version of the character's head. And it'll also look like the figure itself. So see how he had little kisses there? See how the common one is just closed mouth, whereas the chase is open mouth. So just a neat little touch, something that is just like, they didn't have to do it, but like, it's just fun. And I mean, that is at the end of the day, the essence of what Funko is. And I feel like they've been delivering with this product line. And I think it's proven like, when these get released on the Funko site, if you're not there within a day, they're gone. They're gone. Like I had to get Roger Rabbit from Hot Topic because every time I checked on Funko's website, he was just gone. And then even when they end up on these other retailers like Hot Topic and Box Lunch and whatever Entertainment Earth, they're also gone because they're just, there's that limited edition sense to them where you want to get it. You want to get that chase. And I don't think it's quite the same feeling as a Funko Pop chase. It's a little different. Um, and for that sensation, I think like they've done a really good job with this product line. That's all I have to say. I like them. I love Disney. And thus far, I've been pleasantly surprised. So hopefully Funko keeps on giving me more of that in the future. That's what I want, Funko. Let's keep it up. Hopefully you guys learned something and hopefully you loved seeing my small collection, small but mighty collection. And I'll keep updating you when I get Vampire Jack and any other future Disney releases. I also have, <laughs> side note, I mean, this is such a long video, but I also ended up with two extra Jack commons and here's one, by the way, <laughs> two extras of this and then four extra commons of Roger Rabbit. Roger was a mess, but it is what it is. I ended up getting it off of eBay because I opened five and all five were commons. So you win some, you lose some, you know, but I have a video series plan where I'm going to do customs to the commons I have to try to give them alter, uh, alternate paint jobs slash variants chase designs so I'm kind of excited about it we'll see how it turns out um so yeah I actually plan to do that soon very very soon so keep a lookout for that thanks for stopping by I hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did I'm gonna be shameless and self-promote I'm really bad at that but I'm trying not to be but if you did like anything I had to say please like and subscribe, stick around for future content. I'm pushing myself to try and do this because, you know, this is something I've been wanting to do. So why not take risks, put myself out there and we'll see how it goes. But I hope to see y'all next time. This has been fun. And until the next one, I'm, I was gonna do something here. Until the next one, bye.